Hello. I am back, mostly, to see if I can get some spinning done. I have eh, maybe two hours. So, um, I'm hoping that I can get some of it happening. Let's see if I can figure out this whole having my hands in camera thing. Sorry, folks, this is um, still all a little bit new. And this is the is this in in my camera view is the, like so many cords like way too many cords all doing god only knows what and they're all in view but whatever we're here mostly to listen to this lovely background music and um and spin so let's see how much we can get done today Gotta get thinner than that. There we go. Consistency is um, bane of my existence in spinning. I think it's bane of everybody's existence in spinning, but you know. I'm sorry about the ad. Um, I was like, oh wait, if I run this manually now, it won't happen for like an hour instead of happening in 10 minutes when I don't have the ability to easily click on things. So. Yay, finished ad break. I am a fan of finished ad break. The thing with ad breaks that I'm always confused about, so I monitor my stream on my phone uh, with like a different login than, than has me here, the one they stream with, specifically for the purposes of, like it's a secondary channel, specifically for the purposes of monitoring. Um, so it's not subscribed to me, it's supposed to get ads, whatever. I just ran a three minute ad. That account didn't see it, and I have absolutely no idea why. Like, I have no idea how that works. Also, I have no idea why. Um, Twitch thinks that my um, stream is unstable because my bitrate is too high. Like, I don't think I have any way of controlling that. Let's mix some of this darker, darker color in. So uh, yesterday I was spinning mostly this like peachy red. Um, I had split my my yarn so it was like this color. Um, but you know, so I, I took the the whole um, the whole braid and I split it in half so I get two singles. But um, now we've moved on to this sort of wine color almost. Um, and I gotta say, I'm really liking it. Like, I'm usually not a big fan of shades of red or whatever, but, um, but I'm liking this one. Uh, and I have a bunch of it before we get into, like, the, the darker purpley blues, so that is also fairly exciting. But, yeah. Oh, I'm not here to talk. I'm here to spin while there's music. Don't know if I can be particularly entertaining, but let's just meditatively hang out. I've been told the, the sound of the wheel is meditative, but again, I don't know how much of it gets picked up. I gotta review the stream afterwards, because we... This is new. I have not really tried spinning on stream before, but um, for anybody watching now or later, this is an electric eel uh, wheel, E-E-L, um, I don't know, uh, the 6.0, the 6.1 just came out and it's got some minor changes and modifications, um, not, nothing that I felt the need to upgrade over considering I picked up this wheel in November, so it's still fairly new. Um, but, you know, this is kind of, kind of quiet and lovely and, um, when I was employed, you know, it was quiet enough that I could use it on Zoom meetings without muting myself and nobody heard it on the meeting. Um, so that was pretty exciting and I love that it's small and portable. 
Um, I'm going to Glasgow for Worldcon in August, and I will be bringing it on the plane. And I will be bringing it to the con and all that. Um, I do have an after. I have a bunch of aftermarket parts, so I do have um, an auto winder on it, so that um, I don't have to stop and move the hooks. And I also have um, one of the spinning sirens cases, so you can see the the purple bottom of the case. It's got like a drawer um, and the orifice uh, orifice minimizer is also from them um, the main difference between it and the original one is that it's got notches in it I had put some velcro on the wheel um, you know to allow me to kind of anchor the yarn when I'm pause spinning but the notches on the orifice reducer are, are really nice um, and then there is like a, a lid so the notches are lovely. Um, there's this like lid. That's the, uh, there we go. That's the spinning siren logo. So there's a lid that just kind of goes on top um, and it uh, clips in with these with these clips. I'm not gonna actually do it right now, but uh, it's 3D printed and um, it's quite lovely, uh, but it, it, it kind of creates a hard shell on it. Um, and I put the whole thing, uh, hard case and all, into the bag that I keep my, like, some extra bobbins in and, and my power cord, because I'm, I'm running off of, um, I'm running off of the battery, but, um, you know, it obviously comes with a power cord and stuff. But I got a, um, I really need to move the big camera, because it is just pointing in the wrong place for me. Um, uh, oh my god, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so I got a, um, a serger bag, like for, for a sewing serger, um, and that's been pretty good for, um, for storing all of my wheel stuff. Are we being, are we getting enough spin on this? Or are we just, like, failing to get enough spin? Let's up our speed a little. Let me see about getting a little bit more spin. But, yeah. Yeah, so the benefit of running the three minute ad is I kind of like look at my ad manager was that the next ad is in two and a half hours. And um, since I have to go to torture class tonight, by which I mean pure bar, which is really, it really is torture. Um, and we have to leave here at five exactly. Um, and that's in um, two hours and 18 minutes. I'm not sure I'm going to be um, streaming long enough for that, but I also really hate pre-rolls and my pre-rolls are gonna come back in an hour. So I might, I mean, I'm, might also just take a break in an hour to like go pee because everybody really needs to be able to take that kind of break um but yeah um i tried this setup at like i don't know 2 3 a.m yesterday um and so i did like a short 20 minute stream then of you know just kind of figuring out what the heck was uh, was going on and what uh, like where the stuff was working. So I uh, I ascertained that it was working, but I was telling folks then that I had um, picked up a Merlin tree hitchhiker as my first wheel, and it was lovely and very small, very portable is its point and also that it was like made out of parts that you can buy at the hardware store for like repair purposes so it was pretty useful for that but um i liked it and it was nice and i had the upgrade kit on it to make it a two pedal because i 
cannot do a single single treadle, treadle. Um, I just can't maintain the rhythm that's needed. Um, I think it's the same problem as why I'm not very good at platformer video games. It's just like places where you need to press, you know, the, the jump button and the up button and the forward button in quick, useful succession. Like, I can't. My hands and eyes do not coordinate that way. So I was having the same problem except with feet, um, with the uh, single treadle. So the double treadle made it better. Um, and I had great fun with it, and I kind of learned to spin, and then I saw on Ravelry somebody selling a uh, Kiwi 2 with a full woolly winder system, which if you don't know what that is, um, it's a setup where you replace the flyer with their flyer that's got gears in it, and uh, you replace your bobbins with their bobbins that have gears on them, and that means that as the flyer flies, um, the gear makes like a Archimedes screw move, so the it makes the hooks move by themselves. So it's kind of like the a different version of the auto winder. No batteries needed or anything, but you need a new flyer and you need um, a new bobbins. Um, but I loved it and I got very used to it on the Kiwi. Um, and I had like I had a lot of fiber and I was spinning, but not not a lot. It's like spinning, kind of like a little bit, still learning, etc. And then last November, I finally succumbed to the siren call of the eel. Um, I've seen it for like three years at the New England Fiber Festival every first weekend of November, every year. Anyway, and uh, this past November I saw it and I was like, you know, I should just get it. Um, and I did. I picked this wheel up and within two days I knew that I needed something and I went and I got the auto winder which is a very different system um, it's got uh, two AAA batteries that are in one of the arms of the flyer um, and the, a similar Archimedes screw in the other so the benefit is that you don't need special bobbins but the detriment is that A you need the batteries and B you need to turn it on and off like if you forget to turn it on your 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 hooks don't move um but if you do turn it on so we can see right like it's on and you can i think you can see it i'm hoping my um zoom is zoomed in, zoomed in correctly but you can see yeah you can see it moving because there's batteries inside here um so you have to turn it on and off but it is lovely it means i don't have to stop to move my hooks which you know is a is a big thing for me and um yeah so i i i haven't really used my kiwi since i have been playing with the eel because um, the motor means I don't have to treadle at all. You remember I was saying that I was having trouble with the single treadle, and the double treadle is better, but uh, it's even better when I don't have to treadle at all, and I don't have to coordinate my feet with my hands. And um, also, so the other thing too is that maybe two years ago at this point, yeah, two years ago at this point, I. Um, started having this like weird pain in my ankle and my ankle swelled up like it swelled up so much that I couldn't walk because there was so much swelling that I couldn't flex my foot and it's amazing how much you need to flex your foot in order to um, you know a actually uh, a actually walk um, prednisone is magic but you can't live on it and we determined that I was probably having uh, inflammation reactive arthritis, but what we didn't manage to determine back then was what it was that was inflamed, right? Like, great, it's reacting to an inflammation, but like, where, where is there any inflammation happening? And um, we didn't know, and eventually with prednisone, it kind of calmed down, and well moved on and had another year of you know my normal um health right like i've had a gallbladder removed so sometimes my body acts like i don't have a gallbladder imagine that 
um, but uh, you know, generally no like problems. And then last uh, early December, uh, my doctor said, you know, you're of that age where you should really go and get a routine colonoscopy. Um, I was less than thrilled about this, but you know, like having previously had cancer, I'm all about preventive screenings. So off I went, uh, general anesthesia or whatever it is like, mostly anesthesia, whatever. I was not awake for this procedure. I woke up and they were like, well, we've got good news and bad news. Good news is no polyps, no cancer, great. Bad news, did you know you have um, like pretty moderate to severe ulcerative colitis? And I'm like, no. <coughs> I thought having that meant you like had bleeding places where you saw and it was worrying. Well, apparently not. Um, but guess what? We knew what was inflamed. So now I am uh, getting what we lovingly in this household call demon infusions because, let me tell you, when they put you on something called Skyreezy and you realize through, you know, TV commercials, because that's how we realize these things in this country, um, that its uh, generic name is like Rizm Kizamad or whatever. And that's clearly a D&D demon from, like, the demon infernal plane. So, you know, if you don't take your own demons, um, store-bought will do. Um, so we infuse demons, and uh, they suppress my immune system, which is great in the time of COVID. Um, but they suppress my immune system so that it stops eating itself in my guts. Um, and I've had my three nurse-made infusions, and I've now started the ones where every week I do it myself, and it's actually pretty easy, because they've got a little gadget, but um, my ankle, and what had by then also developed into my wrist, um, have calmed the heck down. Like, the arthritis has calmed the F down, which is basically amazing. So... That's, that's cool beans, um, but you know, it's been an adventure. But anyway, the bottom line was that when I was having all the arthritis in my ankle, guess what I couldn't do basically any of? Right, I couldn't really um, treadle my spinning wheel. So now I don't need to. If it ever comes back or whatever, I don't need to treadle with my feet at all because I have a lovely motor that's inside the eel. I do periodically consider getting the Nano, which is the like cheaper, tinier cousin of the eel. Um, like the bobbins are smaller, so they probably don't fit a full four ounce, like maybe two ounces of, of fiber, but why is this bit like, why, is, why do I have a free floating random little bit of, of fiber? I stop it, 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 stop it. I hate when like I pause badly and then nothing nothing works okay can we can we do the right thing now maybe no we're gonna be we are going to be screwed up for a little bit all right let's manually feed that in shall we let's um make the twist travel to balance the, the pickup and the draw and sometimes it just is like no don't feel like it if you um, this fiber is actually from blue brick 
which is a Canadian company. Um, they're pretty cool. Uh, I found them, they got kind of famous when the yarn was used in the model photo of the wingspan pattern. It was like, became super popular for, for everybody. Um, but I really love them. They're one of the few places where I can get, you know, 800, 1200, 1400 yards of a gradient, like in a continuous gradient because I want that for shawls. I don't want to uh, like repeat the gradient in the middle of the pattern. Um, and it's a pretty rare thing to find, but the thing I love most about them is that they're in Canada, which means that when I buy yarn from them, I always feel like I found a magic secret discount because of the exchange rate. Right, it's like, oh, it's a hundred dollars of yarn, but wait, it's actually only seventy-five dollars of yarn. It just looks like it's a hundred dollars because the prices are listed in Canadian. So, I mean, it's not really any cheaper or anything, but it feels like it is. So I, I enjoy it. Plus, they've got amazing gradients, like their um, blue brick. I think it's bluebrickyarn.ca. Maybe it's just bluebrick.ca, but you can Google them. They are pretty amazing, and I highly recommend. Obviously, not sponsored. Nobody sponsors me to do anything, but um, but I like them, and so this is like a merino cashmere blend that I'm quite quite enjoying spinning. It's very soft and very lovely, but I feel like the music like is too loud, like right here. It's too loud in my ears. I don't know how about you guys. So, um, but yeah, so that's kind of all about me and my spinning. I'm not sure necessarily anything else to say. Maybe tomorrow I will, depending on where I get with this, I will stream uh, miniatures because I am putting together a Moomin Troll Helm, which is um, this thing. It's very cool. Um, it's kind of like a, a do-it-yourself miniature kit from Diagostini. And um, I really like it. Um, I think I've got about half of the, the kits now, because it's about a two-year two -year prospect. But uh, I like putting them together, and I like putting them together on stream, although sometimes I also like putting them together just sort of while watching other people's stuff. So but I'm thinking of, of working on that. It's been a couple of weeks since I've done it. I'm thinking that while I am unemployed and before my my partner comes to visit me, which is on the 20th. I'm going to see if maybe I can stream every day for a little bit. Just because, like, I've got the time. What the heck else am I doing, right? Um, like, I'm applying for jobs, obviously, and sleeping late, but... And, you know, there's a bunch of household stuff that I want to do, right? Like, I want to rotate my desk I don't entirely know um, how to most easily do that because it involves moving things around and my room is sort of very Tetris needing. Um, there's a lot of stuff in it and not at all a lot of space um, that are like that that's free. So it makes me feel like I'm playing that game. You know the game that has like 15 numbers in it and one empty slot and 
the numbers are in whatever order and you're supposed to just kind of move them around until you can arrange them in a, in a numeric order. Moving anything in my room feels like I'm playing that game just because, like, you know, there's, there's not a lot of empty floor space, so in order to move something, I have to move something else and then move it back, and it's, um, it's a problem, but but I want to be able to rotate my desk because I picked up um, a king-size bed uh, a while ago and when I did that I stopped being able to use my green screen because my green screen is the Elgato like you know the bar you keep on the ground and then you pull it up um, which is lovely and I, I enjoy it and I used to use it all the time but right now it is wider than the space between my my bed and the other wall so if i use it it has to be at this like super duper weird angle and i don't like it um so i was thinking of rotating my desk so that i have a little bit more space behind me for setting that up um, i just need to bite the bullet and actually do it because because I do, right? It's a, it's a thing that just needs to be done. But the other problem is that I don't, like, I have so many cables and things on my desk, and my cable management is garbage. And um, I'm just worried I'm going to start turning this table and just like, the TV will fall off its stand or something and and it will like right now it will because I have a I have a little splitter thing that you know changes what's plugged into the various HDMI ports because I have a, a Roku and a Chromecast and a capture card that is set up to capture my um, my Nintendo Switch. So. But I'm not playing any games on Switch now such that I would want to or need to stream them, but. Maybe someday soon I will again, because, you know, Switch will come out with something. I streamed a lot of Animal Crossing, but I've mostly not really played that in quite a while. Forgetting that I need to lean on this side and not that side, or I end up not in the camera.
feel like what I should be doing while I'm doing this is like reading something that's um, entirely open source or something. I don't know if that's something that anybody would find interesting, but... I'd have to find something that's... It's gotta be like, old stuff is open source, right? Like books are in the public domain when they get old. Maybe when I take a break in um, half an hour, I will go find something while, while my three minutes of ads runs, so. to go check on something super quick over here. Just kind of make sure that my stream is still streaming. <laughs> Just continually keeps thinking that it's um, unstable, which is like weird because I look at my thing and it's like a pretty straight, stable, 6,000 kilobytes per second um, green line on OBS, but and we're not dropping any frames yet, knock on wood. zoned out. That's what I just did. That's bad. Let's see how whether we can fix this easily or not. bit of a long draw here, but that's okay. If 
I mention that this is hypnotic? It is like, it's like driving with cruise control. It's so easy to, to zoom out. So definitely think that finding something to read would be nice. I don't know what. Like, maybe there's some fairy tales or something. I don't know. Like, I'm assuming I need a book that is out of copyright to read, but on the other hand, I'm actually not sure how that works because, like, I'm the one reading it, but on the other hand, the words are actually in copyright, so. And as much as, you know, I would, nobody wants me to read, like, War and Peace out loud, right? Despite knowing, I know that one's out of um, out of copyright, but not quite uh, not quite the same. So. But we'll find something. I mean, I'd read like Shakespeare sonnets, but they would require too much scrolling. Dickens, maybe? Hmm. I could read some. Pride and Prejudice. Right? Pride and Prejudice and, and spinning could work. I don't know. I'll find some.
you know what I really should read? The Iliad or the Odyssey. That's a good thing to read out loud. Maybe I'll find a, a copy of that to, to have on screen and read. This camera auto zooms or auto focuses. I don't know what it's actually focusing on exactly. Like maybe it's maybe focusing on my hands, maybe. But also like he is washing stuff out a bunch. I wonder if well, that doesn't work. I wonder why that doesn't work anymore. It's clearly on. Hmm. Yeah, it's my light and it does not work. Hmm. Plugged in. Hmm. I'm not a fan of that not of that not working any better? No, that's worse. <laughs> that's worse. Let's not do that. We're gonna 
take a break now because I need a drink and everybody else should get up and get a drink as needed. Welcome back. Um, so I found I found a copy of the the Iliad. So uh, we can read it while I spin. Let me just put that 
put my keyboard away. Hmm. I should probably actually put that in the So I can spell it Iliad, maybe. I'm like, that doesn't have a Y in it. Why did my brain think it did? Let's see if that will, yeah, that, that updated. Great. on the road. So this is the Iliad, which I'm not sure I've ever read. I read the Odyssey in school. I'm not sure I've read the Iliad. Um, I've heard some of it, but not whole of it. So this is book one. The quarrel between Agamemnon and Achilles. Achilles withdraws from the war and sends his mother, Thetis, to ask Jove to help the Trojans. Scene between Jove and Juno on Olympus. Sing, O goddess, the anger of Achilles, son of Peleus, that brought countless ills upon the Achaeans. Achaeans? Many a brave soul did it send hurrying down to Hades, and many a hero did it yield a prey to dogs and vultures. For so were the counsels of Jove fulfilled from the day on which the son of Atreus, king of men, the great Achilles, first fell out with one another. And which of the gods was it that set them on to quarrel? It was the son of Jove and Leto, for he was angry with the king and sent a pestilence upon the host to plague the people, because the son of Atreus had dishonored Cressus, his priest. Now Cressus had come to the ships of the Achaeans to free his daughter and had brought with him a great ransom. Moreover, he bore in his hand the scepter of Apollo, wreathed with a suppliant's wrath wreath and he and he besought the Achaeans but most of all the two sons of Atreus who were the chiefs sons of Atreus he cried and all other Achaeans may the gods who dwell in Olympus grant you to sack the city of Priam and to reach your homes in safety and free my daughter and accept a ransom for her in reverence to Apollo, son of Jove. On this, the rest of the Achaeans with one voice were for the re respecting the priest and taking the ransom that he offered. But not so Agamemnon, who spoke fiercely to him and sent him roughly away. Old man, said he, let me not find you tarrying about our ships nor yet coming hereafter. Your scepter of the god and your wreath shall profit you nothing. I will not free her. She shall grow old in my house at Argos, far from her own home, busying herself with her loom and visiting my couch. So go and do not provoke me, or it shall be the worse for you. The old man feared him and obeyed. Not a word he spoke, but he went by the shore of the sounding sea and sprayed apart to king apollo whom lovely leto had borne hear me he cried o god of the silver bow that protects chris and the holy kila and rulest tenant tenedus with thy might hear me o thou of smith if i have yet decked your temple with garlands or burned your thigh bones in fat of bulls or goats grant my prayer and let your arrows avenge those my tears upon the danans what is even happening here thus did he pray and apollo heard his prayer he came down furious from the summits of olympus with his bow and his quiver upon his shoulder and the arrows rattled on his back with the rage that trembled within him. He set himself down away from the ships with a face as dark as night 
and his silver bow rang death as he shot his arrow in the midst of them. First he smote their mules and their hounds, but presently he aimed his shaft at the people themselves, and all day long the pyres of the dead were burning. For nine whole days he shot his arrows among the people, but upon the tenth day Achilles called upon called them in assembly, moved thereto by Juno, who saw the Achaeans in their death throes and had compassion upon them. Then, when they were got together, he rose and spoke among them. Son of Atreus, said he, I deem that we should now turn roving home if we would escape destruction, for we are being cut down by war and pestilence at once. Let us ask some priest or prophet or some reader of dreams, for dreams too are of Jove, who can tell us why Phoebus Apollo is so angry, and say whether it is for some vow that we have broken, or hecatomb that we have not offered, and whether he will accept the savor of lambs and goats without blemish, so as to take away the plague from us. With these words he sat down, and Calchas, son of Thestor, wisest of augurs, who knew things past, present, and to come, rose to speak. He it was who had guided the Achaeans with their fleet to Ilius, though the prophesying with which Phoebus Apollo had inspired him. With all sincerity and goodwill, he addressed them thus. Achilles, loved of heaven, you bid me tell you about the anger of King Apollo. I will therefore do so. But consider first and swear that you will stand by me heartily in word and deed, for I know that I shall offend one who rules the Argives with might, to whom all the Achaeans are in subjection. A plain man cannot stand against the anger of a king, who, if he swallow his displeasure now, will yet nurse revenge till he has wrecked it. Consider, therefore, whether or no you will protect me. And Achilles answered, Fear not, but speak as it is born in you, born in upon you from heaven, for by Apollo Calchas, to whom you pray, and those oracles you reveal to us, not a Danan at our ships shall lay his hand upon you, while I yet live to look upon the face of the earth. No, not though your na you name Agamemnon himself, who is by far the foremost of the Achaeans. Therion, the seer, spoke boldly. The god, he said, is angry, neither about vow nor hecatomb, but for his priest's sake, whom Agamemnon has dis dishonored, in that he would not free his daughter, nor take a ransom for her. Therefore, <coughs> as he sent these evils upon us, and will yet send others, he will not deliver the Danans from his, this pestilence, till Agamemnon has restored the girl without fee or ransom to her father, and has sent a holy hecatomb to Christ. Thus we might perhaps appease him. With these words he sat down, and Agamemnon rose in anger. His heart was black with rage, and his eyes flashed fire as he scowled on Calchas and said, Seer of evil, you never yet prophesied smooth things concerning me, but have ever loved to foretell that which was evil. You have brought me neither comfort nor performance, and now you come seeing among Danans, and saying that Apollo has pl plagued us because I would not take a ransom for this girl, the daughter of Crisis. I have set my heart on keeping her in my own house, for I love her better than even than my own wife, Clytemnestra, whose peer she is alike in form and feature, <coughs> in understanding and accomplishment. <coughs> you know, reading out loud makes me need a beverage. At least, it feels like it needs beverages. Okay. Where were we? <coughs> um, oh, yes. Still, I will give her up if I must, for I would have the people live, not die. 
but you must find me a prize instead, or I alone amongst the Argives shall be without one. This is not well, for you behold, all of you, that my prize is to go elsewhither. And Achilles answered, Most noble son of Atreus, covetous beyond all mankind, how shall the Achaeans find you another prize? Wow, covetous beyond all mankind. We have no common store from which to take one. Those we took from the cities have been awarded. We cannot disallow the awards that have been made already. Give this girl, therefore, to the god. And if ever Jove grants us to sack the city of Troy, we will require you three and fourfold. Or we will requite you three and fourfold. Then Agamemnon said, Achilles, valiant though you be, you shall not thus outwit me. You shall not overreach and you shall not persuade me. Are you to keep your own prize while I sit tamely under my loss and give up the girl at your bidding? Let the Achaeans find me a prize in fair exchange to my liking, or I will come and take your own, or that of Ajax or of Ulysses, and he to whomsoever I may come shall rue my coming. But, if it, but, but of this we will take the thought hereafter. For the present, let us draw a ship into the sea and find a crew for her expressly. Let us put a hecatomb on board and let us send Cassius also. Further, let some chief man among us be in command, either Ajax or Idominus or yourself, son of Peleus, mighty warrior that you are, that we may offer sacrifice and appease the anger of the god. Achilles scowled at him and answered, You are steeped in insolence and lust of gain. With what heart can any of the Achaeans do your bidding, either on foray or in open fighting? I came not warring here for any ill the Trojans had done me. I have no quarrel with them. They have not raided my cattle, nor my horses, nor cut down my harvests on the rich plains of Pythia. Pythia? For between me and them there is a great space, both mountain and sounding sea. We have followed you, Sir Insolence, for your pleasure, not ours, to gain satisfaction from the Trojans, for your shameless self and for Menelaus. You forget this, and threaten to rob me of the prize for which I have toiled, and which the sons of the Achaeans had given me. Never when the Achaeans sack any rich city of the Trojans do I receive so good a prize as you do, though it is my hands that do the better part of the fighting. When the sharing comes, your share is far the largest, and I, forsooth, must go back to my ships, take what I can get, and be thankful when my labor of fighting is done. Now, therefore, I shall go back to Pythia. It will be much better for me to return home with my ships for I will not stay here dishonored to gather gold and substance for you. I mean, good, good going there. Uh, you know, he is kind of a dick. Nagamemnon answered, fly if you will. I shall make you no prayers to stay you. I have others here who will do me honor, and above all Jove, the lord of counsel. There is no king here so hateful to me as you are, for you are ever quarrelsome and ill-affected. What though you be brave? Was it not heaven that made you so? Go home then with your ships and comrades to lord it over the Myrmidons. I care neither for you nor for your anger, and thus will I do, since Phoebus Apollo is taking Chrysus from me. I shall send her with my ship and my followers, but I shall come to your tent and take your own prize, Brysus, that you may learn how much stronger I am than you are, and that another may fear to set himself up as equal or comparable with me. The son of Pe Peleus was furious, and his heart within his shaggy breast was divided whether to draw his sword, push the others aside and kill the son of Atreus, or to restrain himself and check his anger. While he thus in two minds, well, he was thus in two minds, and was drawing his mighty sword from its scabbard, Minerva came down from heaven, for Juno had sent her in the love she bore for them both, and seized the son of Peleus by his yellow hair, visible to him alone, for the others no man could see her. 
Achilles turned in amaze, and by the fire that flashed from her eyes at once knew that was she was Minerva. Why are you here, said he, daughter of Aegis-bearing Jove? To see the pride of Agamemnon, son of Atreus? Let me tell you, and it shall surely be, he shall pay for his insolence with his life. And Minerva said, I came from heaven, if you will hear me, to bid you stay your anger. Juno has sent me, who cares for both you alike. Seize, then, this brawling, and do not draw your sword. Rail at him if you will, and your railing will not be vain, for I tell you, and it shall surely be, that you shall hereafter receive gifts three times as splendid by reason of this present insult. Hold, therefore, and obey. Goddess, answered Achilles, however angry a man may be, he must do as you two command him. This will be best, for the gods ever hear the prayers of him who has obeyed them. He stayed his hand on the silver hilt of his sword and thrust it back into his scabbard as Minerva bade him. Then she went back to Olympus among the other gods and to the house of Aegis-bearing Jove. But the son of Peleus again began railing at the son of Atreus, for he was still in a rage. Wine, Biber, he cried, with the face of a dog and the heart of a hind. You never dare to go out with the host in fight, nor yet with your chosen men in ambuscade. You shun this as you do death itself. You had rather go round and rob his prizes from any man who contradicts you. You devour your people, for you are king over a feeble folk. Therefore, son of Atreus, henceforth, you would insult no man. Therefore I say and swear it with a great oath. Nay, by this my scepter which shall sprout, neither leaf nor shoot, shoot nor bud anew from the day on which it left its parent stem upon the mountains. For the axe stripped it of leaf and bark, and now the son of Achaeans Ake bear it as judges and guardians of the decrees of heaven. So surely and solemnly do I swear that hereafter they shall look fondly for Achilles and shall not find him. In a day of your distress, when your men fall dying by the murderous hand of Hector, you shall not know how to help them, and shall rend your heart with rage for the hour when you offered insult to the bravest of the Achaeans. With this the son of Peleus dashed his gold-bestudded scepter on the ground and took his seat while the son of Atreus was beginning fiercely from this his was was beginning fiercely from his place upon the other side then arose smooth-tongued Nestor the facile speaker of the Pylians and the words fell from his lips sweeter than honey two generations of men born and bred in Pylos had passed away under his rule, and he was now reigning over the third. With all sincerity and goodwill, therefore, he addressed them thus. Of a truth, he said, a great sorrow had befallen the Achaean land. Surely Priam with his sons would rejoice, and the Trojans be glad at heart if they could hear this quarrel between you two, who are so excellent in fight and counsel. I am older than either of you, therefore be guided by me. Moreover, I have been a familiar friend of men even greater than you are, therefore be guided by me. Wait, no. I cannot read. Moreover, I have been a familiar friend of men even greater than you, and they did not disregard my counsels. Never again can I behold such men as Pirithus and Gyas, shepherds of his people, or as Cenus, Exadius, godlike Polyphemus, and Theseus, son of Aegis, peer of the immortals. These were the mightiest men ever born upon this earth. Mightiest were they, and when they fought the fiercest tribes of mountain savages, they utterly overthrew them. I came from distant Pylos and went about among them, for they would have me come, and I fought as it was in me to do. Not a man now living could withstand them, but they heard my words and were persuaded by them. So be it also with yourselves, for this is the more excellent way. Therefore, Agamemnon, though you be strong, take not this, take not this girl away, 
for the sons of the Achaeans have already given her to Achilles. And you, Achilles, strive not further with the strive not further with the king, for no man who by grace of Jove wields a scepter has like honor with Agamemnon. You are strong and have a goddess for your mother. But Agamemnon is stronger than you, for he has more people under him. Son of Atreus, check your anger, I implore you, end this quarrel with Achilles, who in the day of battle is a tower of strength to the Achaeans. And Agamemnon answered, Sir, all that you have said is true, but this fellow must needs become our lord and master. He must be lord of all, of, lord of all king of all, and captain of all, and this shall hardly be. Granted that the gods have made him a great warrior, have they also given him the right to speak with railing? Achilles interrupted him. I should be a mean coward, he cried, were I to give it to you in all things. Order other people about, not me, for I shall obey no longer. Furthermore, I say, and lay me saying to your heart, I shall fight neither you nor any man about this girl, for those that take were those also that gave. But if all else that is at my ship, you shall carry away nothing by force. Try that others may see. If you do, my spear shall be reddened with your blood. When they had quarreled thus angrily, they rose and broke up the assembly at the ships of the Achaeans. The son of Peleus went back to his tents and ships with the son of Menoetus and his company while well, Agamemnon drew a vessel into the water and chose a crew of twenty oarsmen. He escorted Chryses on board and sent, moreover, a hecatomb for the god, and Ulysses was, went as captain. These then went on board and sailed their way over the sea. But the son of Atreus bade the people purify themselves, so they purified themselves and cast their filth into the sea. Then they offered hecatomb. What is a hecatomb? Hecatombs of bulls and goats without blemish on the seashore, and the smoke with the savor of their sacrifice was curling up towards heaven. Is it like a sacrificial pyre? Like, what the hell is a hecatomb? Anyway. Thus they, they did, th thus did they busy themselves throughout the host. But Agamemnon did not forget the threat that he had made Achilles and called his trusty messengers and squires Thalthibius and Eurybates. Go, said he, to the tent of Achilles, son of Peleus. Take Brasis by the hand and bring her hither. If he will not give her, I shall come with others to take her, which will press him harder. He charged them straightly further and dismissed them, whereupon they went to their way sorrowfully by the seaside till they came to the tents and ships of the Myrmidons. They found Achilles sitting by his tent and his ships, and ill-pleased he was when he beheld them. They stood fearfully and reverently before him, and never a word did they speak, but he knew them and said, Welcome, heralds, messengers of gods and men. Draw near, my quarrel is not with you, but with Agamemnon, who has sent who has sent you for the girl Brasis. Therefore, Patroclus, bring her and give her to them, but let them be witnesses by the blessed gods, by mortal men, and by the fierceness of Agamemnon's anger, that if ever again there be need for me to save the people from ruin, they shall seek and they shall not find. Agamemnon is mad with rage and knows not how to look before and after that the Achaeans may fight by their ships in safety. Patroclus did as his dear commander had bidden him. He brought Brasis from the tent and gave her over to the heralds who took her with them to the ships of the Achaeans. And the woman was loth to go. Then Achilles went all alone by the side of the poor sea weeping and looking out upon the boundless waste of waters. He raised his hands in prayer to his immortal mother. Mother, he cried, you bore me doomed to live, but for a little season. Surely Jove, who thunders, Jove, who thunders from Olympus, might have made this that little glorious. It is not so. 
Agamemnon, son of Atreus, has done me dishonor and has robbed me of my prize by force. As he spoke, he wept aloud, and his mother heard him, where she was sitting in the depths of the sea, hard by the old man, her father. Forthwith she rose as it were a gray mist out of the waves, sat down before him as he stood weeping, caressed him with her hand and said, My son, why are you weeping? What is it that grieves you? Keep it not from me, but tell me that we may know it together. Achilles drew a breath, saw, drew a deep sigh and said, You know it. Why tell you what you know already? We went to Thebe, the strong city of Etonia, sacked it and brought hither the spoil. The sons of the Achaeans shared it duly among themselves and chose lovely Cressus as the mead of Agamemnon. But Cressus uh, spelled just like the girl except for one letter I, priest of Apollo, came to the ships of the Achaeans to free his daughter and brought with him a great ransom. Moreover, he bore in his hands the scepter of Apollo wreathed with a suppliant's wrath wreath, and he besought the Achaeans, but most of all the two sons of Atreus who were their chiefs. Yeah. On this the rest of the Achaeans with one voice were for respecting the priest and taking the ransom that he offered, but not so Agamemnon, who spoke fiercely to him and sent him roughly away. So he went back in anger, and Apollo, who loved him dearly, heard his prayer. Then the god sent a deadly dart upon the Argives, and the people died thick in one another, for the arrows went everywhere among the wide host of their Achaeans. At last a seer in the fullness of his knowledge declared to us the oracles of Apollo, and I was myself first to say that we should appease him. Whereon the son of Atreus rose in anger, and threatened that which he has since done. The Achaeans are now taking the girl in a ship to Christ and sending gifts of sacrifice to the god, but the heralds have just taken from my tent the daughter of Brasius, whom the Achaeans have awarded to myself. Help your, bra help your brave son, therefore, if you are able. Go to Olympus, and if you have ever done him service, in word or deed, implore the aid of Jove. Oft times in my father's house have I heard your glory, you glory in that you alone of the immortals saved the son of Saturn from ruin, when the others with Juno, Neptune, and Pallas Minerva would have put him in bonds. It was you, goddess, who delivered him by calling to Olympus the hundred-handed monster whom gods called Briarus, but men, I, I, Gaon? for he is stronger even than his father. When therefore he took his seat all glorious beside the son of Saturn, the other gods were afraid and did not bind him. Go then to him, remind him of all this, clasp his knees and bid him give succor to the Trojans. Let the Achaeans be hemmed in at the sterns of their ships and perish on the seashore, that they may reap what joy they may of their king and that Agamemnon may rue his blindness in offering insult to the foremost of the Achaeans. Thetis wept and answered, My son, woe is me that I should have borne or suckled you. Would indeed that you had lived your span free from all sorrows at your ships, for it is all too brief. Alas, that you should be at once short of life and long of sorrow above your peers. Woe, therefore, was the hour in which I bore you. Nonetheless, I will go to the snowy heights of Olympus and tell this tale to Jove, if he will hear our prayer. Meanwhile, stay where you are with your ships, nurse your anger against the Achaeans, and hold aloof from fight. For Jove went yesterday to Oceanus to a feast among the Ethiopians, and the other gods went with him. He will return to Olympus twelve days hence. I will then go to his mansion paved with bronze, and will beseech him, nor do I doubt that I shall be able to persuade him. On this she left him, still furious at the loss of her that had been taken from him. Meanwhile, Ulysses reached Greece with the hecatomb, 
When they had come inside the harbor, they furled the sails and laid them on the ship's hold. They slackened the forestays, lowered the mast into its place, and rowed the ship to the place where they would leave her lie. There they cast out their mooring stones and made fast the Huser hawsers. They then got out upon the seashore and landed the hecatomb for Apollo. Chrysis also left the ship, and Ulysses led her to the altar to deliver her into the hands of her father. Chrysis, said he, King Agamemnon has sent me to bring you back your child and to offer sacrifice to Apollo on behalf of the Danans that we may pr propitiate the god who has now brought sorrow upon the Argaps. So saying, he gave the girl over to her father, who received her gladly, and they arranged the holy hecatomb all orderly round the altar of the god. They washed their hands and took up the barley meal to sprinkle over the victims, while Chrysus lifted up his hands and prayed aloud on their behalf. Hear me, he cried, O god of the silver bow, that protects Christ and holy Kila, and rulest Tenedos with thy might, even as thou didst hear me aforetime when I prayed and didst press hardly upon the Achaeans, so hear me yet again and stay this fearful pestilence from the Danans. Thus did he pray, and Apollo heard his prayer. When they had done praying and sprinkling the barley meal, they drew back the heads of the victims and killed and flayed them. Ugh. They cut out the thigh bones, wrapped them round in two layers of fat, set some pieces of raw meat on top of them, and then Chrysus laid them on the wood fire and poured wine over them, while the young men stood near him with five pronged spits on their hands. When the thigh bones were burned and they had tasted the inward meats, they cut the rest up small, put the pieces upon the spits, roasted them till they were done, and drew them off. Then, when they had finished their work, and the feast was ready, they ate it, and every man had his fill, full share, so that all were satisfied. As soon as they had enough to eat and drink, Pages filled the mixing bowl with wine and water, and handed it round after giving every man his drink offering. I'm gonna just assume that the victims they're talking about here are like goats and sheep and not people because otherwise it would be super bad. Thus, all day long, the young men worshipped the god with song, hymning him and chanting the joyous paean, and the god took pleasure in their voices. But when the sun went down and it came on dark, they laid themselves down to sleep by the stern cables of the ship. And when the child of morning, rosy-fingered dawn, appeared, they again set sail for the host of the Achaeans. Apollo sent them a fair wind, so they raised their mast and hoisted their white sails aloft. As the sails sail bellied with the wind, the ship flew through the deep blue water, and the foam hissed against her bows as she sped onward. When they reached the wide-stretching host of the Achaeans, they drew the vessel ashore, high and dry upon the sands, set her strong props beneath her, and went their way to their own tents and ships. But Achilles abode at his ship and nursed his anger. He went not to the honorable assembly, and sallied not forth to fight, but gnawed on his own heart, pining for battle and the war cry. Now, after twelve days, the immortal gods came back in a body to Olympus, and Jove led the way. Thetis was not unmindful of the charge her son had laid upon her, so she rose from under the sea and went through great heaven with early morning to Olympus, where she found the mighty son of Saturn sitting all alone upon its topmost ridges. She set herself down before him, and with her left hand seized his knees, while with her right she caught him under the chin and besought him, saying, Father Jove, if I ever did you service in word or deed among the immortals, hear my prayer, and do honor to my son, whose life is to be cut short so early. King Agamemnon has dishonored him by taking his prize and keeping her. Honor him then yourself, Olympian lord of council, and grant victory to the Trojans, till the Achaeans give my son his due and load him with riches in requital. 
Jove set forth a while silent and without a word, but Thessus still kept firm hold of his knees and besought him a second time. Incline your head, she, said she, and promise me surely or else deny me, for you have nothing to fear that I may learn how greatly you disdain me. At this, Jove was much troubled and answered, I shall have trouble if you set me quarreling with Juno, for she will provoke me with her taunting speeches. Even now, she is always railing at me before the other gods and accusing me of giving aid to the Trojans. Go back now, lest she should find out. I will consider the matter and will bring it about as you wish. See, I inclined my head that you may believe me. This is the most solemn promise that I can give to any god. I never recall my word or deceive or fail to do what I say when I have nodded my head. As he spoke, the son of Saturn bowed his dark brows and the ambrosial locks swayed on his immortal head till vast Olympus reeled. When the pair had thus laid their plans, they parted, drove to his house while the goddess quitted the splendor of Olympus and plunged into the depths of the sea. The gods rose from their seats before the coming of their sire. Not one of them dared to remain sitting, but all stood up as he had come among them. There, then, he took his seat, but Juno, when she saw him, knew that he and the old merman's daughter, silver-footed Thetis, had been hatching mischief, so she at once began to upbraid him. Trickster, she cried, which of the gods have you been taking into your councils now? You are always settling matters in secret behind my back, and have never yet told me if you could help it one word of your intentions. Juno, replied the sire of gods and men, you must not expect to be informed of all my counsels. You are my wife, but you would find it hard to understand them. When it is proper for you to hear, there is no one, god or man, who will be told sooner. But when I mean to keep a matter to myself, you must not pry, nor ask questions. Dread son of Saturn, answered Juno. When are you, what, what are you talking about? I? Pry and ask questions? Never. I let you have your own way in everything. Still, I have a strong misgiving that the old merman's daughter Thetis has been talking to you over. For she was with you and had held hold of your knees this selfsame morning. I believe, therefore, that you have been promising her to give glory to Achilles and to kill much people at the ships of the Achaeans. Wife, said Jove, I can do nothing but you suspect me and find it out. You will take nothing by it, for I shall only dislike you the more, and it will go harder with you. Granted, that is to say that, that it is as you say. I mean to have it so. Sit down and hold your tongue as I bid you, for if I once begin to lay my hands about you, though all heaven were on your side, it would profit you nothing. On this Juno was frightened, so she curbed her stubborn will and sat down in silence. But the heavenly beings were disquieted throughout the house of Jove till the cunning workman Vulcan began to try and pacify his mother Juno. It will be intolerable, said he, if you two fall to wrangling and setting heaven in an uproar about a pack of mortals. If such ill counsels are to, be, are to prevail, we shall have no pleasure at our banquet. Let me then advise my mother and she must herself know that it will be better to make friends with my dear father Jove, lest he again scolds her and disturbs our feast. If the Olympian Thunderer wants to hurl us all from our seats, he can do so, for he is far the strongest. So give him fair words, and he will then soon be in good humor with us. As he spoke, he took a double cup of nectar and placed it in his mother's hands. Cheer up, my dear mother, said he, and make the best of it. I love you dearly and should be very sorry to see you get a thrashing. However, grieved I might be, I could not help, for there is no standing against Joe. Once before, when I was trying to help you, he caught me by the foot and flung me from the heavenly threshold. All day long, from morn till eve, was I falling, till at sunset I came to ground in the island of Lemnos, and there I lay, 
with very little life left in me, till the sentience came and tended me. Juno smiled at this, and as she smiled, she took the cup from her son's hand. Then Vulcan drew sweet nectar from the mixing bowl and served it round among the gods, going from left to right, and the blessed gods laughed out loud, up, uh, af laughed out a loud applause as they saw him bustling about the heavenly mansion. Thus, though the livelong day to the going down of the sun, they feasted, and every one had his full share, so that all so that all were satisfied. Apollo struck his lyre, and the muses lifted up their sweet voices, calling and answering one another. But when the sun's glorious light has faded, they went home to bed, each in his own abode, which lame Vulcan, with his consummate skill, had fashioned for them. So Jove, the Olympian lord of thunder, hied him to the bed in which he always slept, and when he had got on to it, he went to sleep with Juno of the Golden Throne by his side. So that was book one of the Iliad, which was, to be fair, a lot. Um, so I think I'm going to leave book two um, to next time, but the little um, kind of description of what book two is about is that Job sends a lying dream to Agamemnon, who thereon calls the chiefs in assembly and proposes to sound the mind of his army. In the end, they march to fight. Catalogue of the Achaeans and Trojan forces. Well, that sounds exciting. I've always wanted to catalog the Trojan forces, haven't you? Um, maybe, maybe not. Who can tell? But uh, I think we've got maybe another 15 minutes before we keep going. I don't, like I said, I don't want to start um, book two, but let me know if this reading the Iliad was fun for anyone other than me. I certainly thought it was fun. Um, I did realize that I have, like, A, no idea how to pronounce a lot of these place names, and B, I still find it so weird to, um, like, read the names of the gods in the, the Roman way, right? Like, Jove and, uh, Juno and all that, and not, you know, Zeus and Hera, but we shall live, because the Iliad is kind of like a fanfic of the Odyssey, as far as I'm aware, but, like, I'm not 100% certain of that. Oh, we've, you know, we've, like, migrated to the dark purple, and I'm not sure I've actually noticed that we did that but we did it's pretty cool i do really love this this whole gradient is pretty freaking amazing but we shall we shall see how it goes tomorrow we might do more spinning we might do some knitting I might do some cross stitch. I've got a couple of cross stitch projects that um, that I need to do, um, including the. So I just finished one, so I need to figure out how to get it um, get it framed. But I also have um, just like a little chart of just words, and what I need to do is I need to find like a, a chart of a little frog. But um, there is a, a, like a little uh, speech by Ursula Vernon um, as T. Kingfisher. I think it was accepting her nebula, I'm not sure. But it was about um, the specific bugs who uh, went through the digestive tract of frogs. Anyway, the moral of her story was that there's always a light at the end of the frog. And I thought that was amazing, and I want to get it kind of like cross-stitched and, um, and framed and, and hang it up. So I gotta, I gotta find like a little frog 
cross stitch pattern and I gotta actually do it. So maybe we will do that because that's a very quick project, right? It's just it's just backstitch lines of of letters. But who knows how long it'll actually take. So I have I have the even weave. I have the I have a green and like a dark purple, I think. Yeah, dark purple um, uh, DMC floss for the project. So I just need to just need to do it. Um, also, the copy of the Iliad that I am reading is from um, Project Gutenberg. That's how I know it's definitely, definitely out of copyright. Um, but yeah, so let's let's get oh, let's get this little last little bit finished before I wander off. Um, I think I want to hit the two hour mark, but like just barely. Like I said, I need to go to torture class at 5, and it's it's 4.15, and I need to change and, and stuff for it, so. That is how, that is how we roll. Right. I mentioned how much I really like this, um, this colorway. It's very nicely variegated because of the like the light colors that are in it, which I think are just like the inside of the of the hank. I think um, I think it just got dyed in the hank like this, and so the very insides are much lighter than the outsides, obviously, because that's how physics works. Physics, chemistry. I think it's physics. Um, so, yeah. All right. Let's get a little bit of a barber pole effect going here, as we as we get both a dark and a and a light strand in here. This is spinning up pretty fast.
I'm assuming that folks can still hear the music. It's sort of like Renaissance country dancing.
this way. All right, everybody. I think I just saw my friend Storm go and be on. So we are going to go and raid him. There we go. He's uh, streaming Stardew. So we are going to go and raid him. He's just starting, so. It will be fun, I promise. He is good people. 